Before I tell you about the current situation that I'm in, let me take you back to the past. So you could have a proper understanding of the events that led me to this point in time. Living in Royal Oak, Michigan, my parents were one of those strict parents that would try to protect me from the dangers of the real world. That meant no violent games. I got to play them with my friends, but never in my own home. No violent movies, and I had to wait till marriage to have sex. I never understood why they were so high maintenance. I played violent games like Cooking Mama before, <laughs> and never wanted to go and cook my own mom like geez. Besides, I am a well-known personality for garden player, so sex was the last thing on my mind. Regardless though, every day they'd remind me not to sin and to be sure to keep the temptations at bay. So as you can see, I didn't have that much of a stable family. And honestly, it was more annoying that they told me the same shit every day than the fact that they wouldn't let me enjoy these sinful things. I'd rather listen to my friend Sam cry about how the cashier gave her her latte one microsecond late than hear another lesson from my parents. But that's just me. Anyway, as they were getting ready to lecture me yet again, we got a call from the town sheriff that my friends Sam, Ted, and Bruce have gone missing. Apparently, they went to a remote cabin in the woods to film their movie, Kind Living, and no one had heard from them ever since. Hearing the terrible news about something possibly bad happening to them, my parents continued to lecture me about the birds and the bees. After that whole TED presentation about doing the nasty was over, we got up to get changed so that we could join the locals with the research of my boys. My parents stopped me and told me not to go outside and just wait for them. I tried to object, but they told me to shut the fuck up, and I said okay. I went back to my room and looked out the window and waited for them to get into the car and drive to the forest. As I was doing my daily rituals in my room, giggity, I had an idea. I'd never went in my parents' room before and thought that this would be the one chance I'd get to see what they have hidden in their room. I got up, hid my semen sock under the bed, and marched towards my parents' room. Why did you want a girl narrating this? I started to breathe heavily as I turned the knob, if you know what I mean, and opened the door to my parents' inner sanctum. I gasped as I saw their room was normal. Nothing out of place or anything strange about it. I sighed as I turned around and walked towards the door. As I did, however, I slipped on a bra and fell. As I cursed myself for falling into an obvious booby trap, I tried to get up and put my hand over the shelf for support. Suddenly, I heard something that sounded like an unlocking sound. I looked around confused, trying to find out what has changed in the room, and I realized that there was a secret entrance leading up to the attic. I didn't know our attic was this big. There already wasn't enough room to move around in the first place, so maybe this secret part of the attic was the reason for that. I went to the attic, and to my shock and disappointment, there was nothing. No boxes, no stuff from our old home, no nothing. I wondered why this part of the attic was blocked off when something caught my eye. It was an old, dusty VHS tape. I crawled to it like a blonde white girl with frosted tips crawling to the Starbucks cashier's crotch and picked it up. It looked like it had been there for centuries. There was something written on the front, too. Mr. and Mrs. Johnson. Sex Tape, 1969. Hotel, Michigan. I was at a loss. Not only was this the author's lame attempt at a reference to Hotel California, but also the fact that my parents, who were against doing the sex, had recorded their own sex tape. Bingo! Is what came to my mind when I came all over this realization. I could use this to blackmail them and have them never lecture me about the female homo, homo sapiens playing with my windpipe ever again. Before that, though, 
I thought that since I'm already fucked up from keeping my sexual temptations at bay, I might as well take a quick look. Who knows, maybe I can learn a thing or two to use it on my stepsister if she gets stuck in a washing machine. Oh yeah, I had a stepsis stepsister this whole time, by the way. So I went down, unfortunately not on some girl, but down the stairs and inserted the rectangular object into the machine that plays VHS tapes and clicked play. The screen went all fuzzy before showing a footage of a hotel. The hotel looked abandoned and empty, empty and abandoned. It looked like it had been that way for a long time. As they got to the entrance, I saw that the door was open. As they entered the hotel, like a sperm entering a woman's wo Okay, I'll stop. As they entered the hotel, I saw the whole place was littered with candles. I got a bad feeling about what I was seeing. My first thought was that maybe my parents were in a cult? Were they the people who were recording this footage? What were they doing in this hotel in the first place? As they walked around, I noticed that out of the shadows and closets, people came out in white robes. Soon they made a circle around the person who was recording the tape. Someone who I'm guessing is the leader, stepped forward and reached out his hand as if they were waiting for something. Suddenly, the person recording it handed over the camera to their leader, and as the camera turned around, I saw that it was my mom and dad. My jaw hit the floor like a Tetris block falling from the sky and into the ground as they got on their knees and the people came closer and closer before sitting on their back and lifting their feet up. Before I could react, I saw them start to pour ketchup all over their feet and my parents started to give them a sniff bowl. I was confused and honestly disgusted. What kind of freak would be into old stinky feet? As I pondered these thoughts, I saw three figures get up and put the camera on the table. They turned towards the camera and took off their hoods. What I saw will forever change my perspective of life and will forever haunt me for the rest of my days. I will never ever feel safe in my own home nor anywhere else ever again. This constant feeling of being watched will haunt me till the day I have both my feet <laughs> in the grave. The three figures I saw were Dan Schneider, Quentin Tarantino, and the third guy was some guy that I did not know. He was wearing a top hat and had a Tim Hortons shirt on. He didn't look like anyone I knew, but looking at the other two, I figured he must have been someone very important. Suddenly, Dan Get in the Van Schneider lifted his hands up in the air and said, Brothers and sisters, our salvation is at hand. With the ritual of feet, we will appease the beings up above and have them bless us with everlasting salvation. As they started to chant the head, shoulders, knees, and toes song, a light appeared above them and they started to levitate towards the source. Before long, a flash of light covered the whole screen and suddenly everyone in the room was gone. Then I saw two gray beings levitate down as the source of the light beam diminished. They looked at each other and said, May this new year bless us with the opportunity to live like normal human beings. Then they held hands and went outside, shape-shifting into my parents as they did. Before the tape ended, I heard the fireworks outside. Before I could gather my thoughts, the tape ended and got ejected out of the VHS player. I was speechless. My parents were aliens. Does that mean I'm an alien? How did they manage to hide it from me for so long? And how did I not notice anything? I suddenly heard a car stop near my house and immediately took the tape and ran back to the attic. Put the tape back where I found it and went back down to greet my parents. After that day, my parents never lectured me and we continued to live out our regular lives. But one question I will never understand is this. 
My parents said that they were born in 1970. How did they film this sex tape in 1969? It still haunts me to this day, but... Now is just not the time to think about that. Because I just heard that my friend Ronald's wife, Kimberly Ann, has been killed, so I have to go and give my condolences to him. After that, we need to go to the funeral of my other friend who committed suicide at Star Shots. I think when I can, I'm gonna have a talk with my alien overlord parents. But for now, I'll just leave things be.